Howdy, howdy, y'all. It is another I Am That episode. I know, surprise one. Normally, I do these on Tuesdays and weekends, but given I haven't been, given I haven't, didn't do one this past weekend because of Easter and all, I'm going to do one now. So, this is chapter 74. Truth is here and now. So, this one... This conversation is wild. I'm just going to say that. Just from the perspective of all these conversations I've done. this Because this questioner is a very unique... He's un- arguing against the Sigurata Maharaj in a very unique way that I've, from what I've seen for the most part. He's going at it from like a very much like a truce. Just like we can't even like know truth sort of situation but he's still like clinging to some ideas of truth of and whatnot like if that makes sense he's still kind of limit because he's still limiting himself as a uh, as a being um so on the Sagrada maharaj says oh you've abandoned her because at one point he talks the way he, he i forget what exactly what he says but he says something and maharaj is like oh you're good so you've abandoned the mind body uh, paradigm, and that's actually kind of for a moment. That's kind of what gets this guy to seem to kind of not like be so like argumentative. It seems because this guy goes like, because even right away, this quite the questioner. He's just like very much what's the proof of truth. He's trying to prove truth itself, which seems pretty crazy when you think about it. Like truth is just you know you kind of fundamentally just no like and like he maharaj even talks about like well it's something you know it's you can experience and it's and it's not that truth is that experience it's just that that's kind of how you kind of fundamentally know it's it's just it's the experience of it and and because late because later in this conversation he the questioner straight up says he's afraid of sadmas and it's like, oh, <laughs> that explains a lot. He just, I think, what was it exactly? He says, uh, I am morally, I am mortally afraid of sadmas and other trances, whatever their cause, a drink, a smoke, a fever, a drug, breathing, singing, shaking, dancing, whirling, praying, sex, or fasting, matras, or some vert- vertitious abstraction can dislodge me from my waking state and give me some experience extraordinary because unfamiliar but when the cause ceases the effect dissolves and only a memory remains haunting but fading let us give up all means and their results for the results are bound by the means let us put the question anew can truth be found and it's just funny because like pretty much this entire conversation, like, especially from that point on, like, the conversation really is, is he's just like, and before it too, it's really, it's just like, hey, you want proof of truth, but like, I'm kind of giving you this, I'm giving you what I know, and you're just like, well, it's not, depends on this, and it depends on that, like, he's, he even says like, oh, it just, it just can't be pure negation, it can't be pure this, it's very much, um, and it's, it's not even that he's like necessarily just like shifting the pull, the, the goal. It's just that it seems like what he wants is like he wants truth to prove itself, but not through any means of, not through any means that he has, <laughs> essentially, right? Like he just, I don't, and that's I don't think what he realizes. And that's what Mr. Grand Maharaj is trying to tell him, essentially. It's like you want me to try to give you some truth here's the means for you to get the truth and but you don't want like those means because you're afraid of trick you know tricking yourself and he even admits that later on he straight up says like i'm afraid of tricking myself um so yeah, it's a very crazy chapter i and here even at one point i guess here the questioner says experience is subjective it cannot be shared your experiences leave me where I am. Maharaj, truth can be experienced, but it is not mere experience. I know it and I can convey it, but only if you are open to it, 
To be open means to want nothing else. Questioner, I am full of desires and fears. Does that mean I am not eligible for truth? Maharaj, truth is not a reward for good behavior, nor a prize for passing some test. It cannot be brought about. It is the primary, the unborn, the ancient source of all that is. You are eligible because you are. You need not merit truth. It is your own. Just stop running away by running after. Stand still. Be quiet. So, like, like I say, like, that's what I'm saying. What I was saying. He's trying to just be like, well, I want truth, but not the, but not the way you want to give it to me. It's like, hey, if you want truth, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, that's ultimately what it comes down to. He just, it seems like he just wants, yeah, like, and I think in a way, because he, he, the last part here, the last back and forth is very important. Um, and Maharaj says, the body is made of food as the mind is made of thoughts. See them as they are, not identification. When natural and spontaneous is liberation, you need not know what you are, enough to know what you are not. What you, what you are will never, you will never know. But for every discovery reveals new dimensions to conquer. The unknown has known limits. Questioner, does it imply ignorance forever? Maharaj, it means that ignorance never was. Truth is in the discovery, not in the discovered. And to discovery, there is no beginning and no end. Question the limits, go beyond, set yourself task apparently impossible. This is the way. And that's probably one of my favorite, and that's like my, one of my favorite. I always like when he says, you know, talk about transcending and going beyond the impossible and not thinking of yourself as a limited being. Because I think those, that is so fundamental to this whole, I think, enterprise of spirituality in general. I think that is the advantage, quote unquote, the advantage of knowing truth and the, the, the perk or whatever you want us to call it. I think if there's anything that is advantageous, it is when you strive for the impossible and you don't think of yourself as some limited being. I think that is very empowering for one's life. And it then becomes very then easy, I think, for the, the skeptics, though, to just be like, well, isn't that, doesn't that sound lovely? And that's just all, this feels nice. But it's not that, like this, that this feels nice, right? This is a, there's a, there's a process through all this. And it means there's a lot more existential sort of, I think, complexity going on in one's life than one realizes, especially if they only think of themselves as a, you know, just the body, as he talks about, you know, that, that's the body identification. If you only think of yourself as, you know, this body, then, yeah, you don't, there's a lot of existential angsts that you just won't have to deal with. You know, there's just because then you're just, I'm just this being. But I mean, there's a lot of existential angsts you will have to then deal with. So it's like, it's always a trade off with this stuff. There's always, anxious to deal with there's always uh obstacles to be overcome and like he says like the truth is in the discovery process itself that is the truth that's that's and that's i think a very interesting way of putting it it's it's something that i've kind of been, i've been thinking about in a different way lately for my own personal life or so for example for me it was more about like yeah, it was kind of about like the transcending, but always just like striving. There's the not a never ending striving for uh just striving for just for the best version of whatever I whatever it is to be me. That's kind of how I thought about it before Maharaj and I think that's kind of paralleled somewhat and meshed in a way fairly nicely with uh this with this with this philosophy. Uh so I think I want to, I'm trying to, it's 
hard to do this. Uh, it's really kind of hard to do this conversation justice. I'm not going to lie. Because this guy, this questioner, really gets at him. He really gets at him. At one point, he's like, Sir, were you to say nothing is true, all is relative, I would agree with you. But you maintain there is tr truth, reality, perfect knowledge. Therefore, I ask, what is it and how am I to... And and how do you know? And what will make me say, yes, Maharaj was right. <laughs> it's like, wow. Jeez. <laughs> Just the way he's phrasing it. Like, what will make... Therefore, I ask, what... Yes, what Maharaj was... What will make me say, what... Yes, Maharaj was right. Just that phrase. I don't know, but something about saying that, like, out loud, is, it's kind of wild to me. Um, but the way he responds to it, I thought was pretty good, though. Maharaj... You're holding on to the need for a proof, a testimony, an authority. You still imagine that truth needs pointing at and telling you, look, here is truth. It is not so. Truth is not the result of an effort, the end of a road. It is here and now in the very longing and the search for it. It is nearer than the mind and the body Nearer than the sense I am. You do not see it because you look too far away from yourself, outside your innermost being. You have objectified truths and insist on your standard proofs and tests, which apply only to things and thoughts. So I thought you handled that pretty well, you know. Like anytime people give him sass. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> this is the last guy. You can just tell. This was the last guy he wanted to give um, some sass. Because he can let you have it. He can definitely uh, let you have it. And like I say, there's just all, so many little bits like that. I mean, this would just really be me just reading all this out loud. So really, like I say, I think the best, if you, if you haven't already, um... Please, uh, I suggest, like I say, get this book. I am that. I highly recommend it. If you haven't already read it, if you have, cool. Tell me what you think. Did I do, you know, did I kind of convey the, some, the idea of what this chapter, chapter was about? And, yeah, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you all next time. So... Hare Krishna, Namaste, peace.